Hello, my Gron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 with another tournament match from the July 17th, 2011 tournament. This time, we're seeing game between Cool Kev playing CISO on the east side of the map and Sickles playing Grekum on the west side of the map. So, this is once again Urban Brawl, as I mentioned before. And once again, it's still the same idea one base on each side and expansions to the north and south. Where Sickles is also going for the very standard Grekum start, getting his triad very quickly and putting his Arteus towards the front, putting it primarily right here. So it can block off both sides fairly effectively, more the bottom side, which as we saw from the previous game between I think it was Hisui and Haiku, that it's a really good idea to put it down there as opposed to up here, for example. Or sorry, no, that was Shalka versus Dark Vortex. My mistake. So same time, or actually no, 30 seconds down from here, Cool Kev is setting up his economy, while Sickles, about 30 seconds up, is setting up his. So right now, Cool Kev is a a little bit ahead, but Sickles has expanded very quickly to his north little corner expansion. He's also gotten 8 LC and 1 QP, while Cool Kev, about 45 seconds behind, now fast forwarding, has 5 LC and 1 importer actually. And it looks like he's sending a Marine and Sop up here, just to double check, see what's going on at. Yeah, see what's going on near the north expansion. Probably going to be attacking from the north instead of attacking head on, which is a good idea because of the Arctic strategy. And now he has 6 LC, but it does look like he's going for a very quick rush of some sort. Getting a factory very quickly, so probably a very quick ATHC rush, which is very common against... Well, he doesn't know it's CISO yet, but it is very common against CISO, because CISO... Sorry, for CISO against Grekum, because Grekum does not have that great cloak detection early game. They have Faros, but those aren't particularly strong, and the Octos are what really help damage your ground units, so... CISO often goes for ATHC to fight off that. Well, at the same time... Or, well, same... At, for... Like a minute up from here, because Sickles is continuing in fast forward, Sickles is also attacking from the north, so both players have been attacking from the north to attack their opponents, and Cool Kev a minute down from Sickles is building up the factory, like I said, setting up for what looks like it's probably an ATHC rush. Sickles, about two minutes up, or a minute and a half up now, has his Octos coming into the base, scouting Octos, just very basic, probably an Echo Scout, coming in to deal a lot of damage, however, right now for Cool Kev, there isn't much he can do, because there really isn't a whole lot that's going on, while for for Cool Kev, back at his time, about two minutes down now, Cool Kev does not really like fast forward, apparently, his forces are coming in and are going to encounter the Octos, the Octo they're trying to dodge the Octos, but unfortunately they weren't quite able to, so they're going to encounter the Octos, and this may delay the attack slightly, and if, he, if Cool Kev builds some ATHCs right now, he will be able to hold off the Octos fairly effectively, the Octos of course cannot detect cloaked units. So some ATHCs right now would be very effective. He's jumped back about 30 seconds just to apparently to change around his attack. Yes, he's getting his attack further in before he encounters the Octos. Looks like he's just trying to lead the Octos away from his base to make sure that they don't die. But right now, no, he's he's gone back further. He is definitely micromanaging the units away from the Octos. So the Octos don't in intercept them, unfortunately for him. Sickles is already well aware that the Octos are there, and... Sickles, er, actually... Sickles doesn't even care. He's actually far, far in the future compared to Cool Kev. He's about three minutes up from Cool Kev because Cool Kev keeps redoing this one section. But it doesn't look like Sickles is really too concerned about finishing off this Marine and Sop team here. And they also aren't actually attacking anything. They aren't going for the RPs. He, he should be able to hear the RPs in the Fog of War, but he hasn't gone up to attack them yet. He looks like he's just really preparing. Getting a Lancer, actually, not an ATHC. Getting a Lancer and two Lancers, in fact. So he's getting very early Lancers to go for a very quick harassment rush, probably. However, he really should be more concerned about the Octos coming in, because those Octos are going to be dealing a lot of damage if he doesn't deal with them, and ATHCs would be the best option to deal with them. Lancers are decent, but the thing with Lancers is that they aren't that good against ground early game. You can upgrade aerospace, and then their weapons get better against ground, but they're primarily air fighters. They're interceptors. And they're also useful for harassment because of their speed, but they aren't particularly useful for killing things on the ground, because, like I said, they don't have particularly powerful weapons on the ground. Right now, though, it doesn't look like Cool Kev really has that in mind. He's more focused on getting units for harassment than he is for getting units to fight off the Octos coming in very quickly. And right now, it looks like... Wow, actually, it looks like there's further forces from Sickles. Actually, he's chronoported some forces. And Sickles is now about five minutes... Or, no, not quite. Nice one. Four minutes up from Cool Kev. He's been fast-forwarding his entire time. Has a ton of initiative. Has Faropods coming back into the past to help out. So a bunch of Faropods coming back, Chronoported back Faropods, 
to help destroy the base of Cool Cat. So it wasn't necessarily the worst idea to get Lancers, but the thing is that the Lancers did not come up in time anyway. So they were getting destroyed. There was no Tornados, there was no Sops, nothing to detect the Faropods. So Cool Cat, while he probably may have been going for an anti Faropod build, it may have been a better idea to have the ATCs come in to actually get past the Octos and raid to undermine the Faropod build to begin with. Because the problem is that Sickles is basically able to expand and build up without any interference. And right now, you're seeing Sickles doing a lot of damage right here with the Chronoport Firepods and the Lancer coming. The Lancer focused, of course, it can't see the Firepods, so the Lancer is focused more on getting to the Octos. The Octos will not go down very quickly. One of the Lancers will be able to kill off one of the Octos, but the other Octo will be able to stay alive, at least from the Lancer. The Marine will be able to help out, finish it off, but unfortunately, the Firepods cannot be spotted, so they're having free reign over the base. Cool Cab jumping back about half a minute. See what he can do. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any close detectors, so he can't see what's going on still. And, like I said, the best option at this point probably would be just to try to escape that with the Lancers and harass the RPs of of Sickles. But the thing is, Sickles, Sickles does not have much going for him right now. He has a lot of RPs, and he has a lot of resources. He doesn't have chronoporting yet at this particular point in time. He doesn't have his Reef yet. But, right now, actually, Undermining would be useless. It was a very small window. This is still 30 seconds up from where Cool Kev is right now, but Sickles does have a huge advantage. Cool Kev does not have the position to really go and start attacking. He, like I said, he could have undermined it earlier, but unfortunately he didn't really, and that's pretty much the only way to attack Chronoport and Chronely, especially against Grekim, is simply to attack the resources so they can't afford Chronoporting in the first place, or at least can't afford to send units back. But of course right now, Sickles has gone Chronoporting, this is right next to the future. Jumping back about three minutes, double check the, the Farpod Chronoporting, he actually has more than enough resources now, after getting, he's getting advanced structures, he will have more than enough resources to get chronoporting right now. So the window has definitely passed for Cool Kev, but that still would have been the way for Cool Kev to get out of this. So right now, Farpods coming in, re chronoporting in. So I'm pretty sure these are the same Farpods twice, to be honest. It's you know, it's possible to tell from here, but it does appear to be the same Farpods twice, just or actually three times, if not more. Just coming in, destroying the basic Cool Kev. So Cool Kev really is not doing very well for himself. He doesn't have, like I said, no cloak detectors. Nothing. He does have a soft now, but the soft is dead very quickly. The Lancer can't really do too much, and it's way too late for the Lancer to start undermining anything. So Sickles has a very safe position. Sickles has pretty much a completely stable re-chrono rush attack that has been completely successful against Cool Kev right now, so it doesn't look like Cool Kev really has much of a chance. I'm not sure what he's going to be doing right now other than GGing, because there really isn't anything else he can do. He has another soft coming, so he's going to try to see what he can with the soft, but unfortunately for him, it doesn't matter. It's... Yeah, it is way too late for Cool Kev. He can't really do much. He can't really do anything right now to save himself, unfortunately. So that was a very short game. Cool Kev, GG's. And thanks for watching. It was a very short game. Very apt demonstration of the power of the re-chrono rush. And yeah, so that is the game for Cool Kev.